Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to decorate a tear tray for uh, winter. Um, what made me decide to do this is a friend of mine is uh, wanting several items to go in her tear tray and um, she wants snowmen. So uh, I'm going to do this snowman themed tiered tray uh, and i'm just adding these little barrel feet uh, and i thrifted several of these uh, some time ago and i'm still using them so uh, i just put a uh, tight bond on them uh, but i leave room to put just a little bit of hot glue so that i'll have the temporary hold from the hot glue and then the permanent hold from the tight bond so I put these on. I'm going to leave these uh, just stained like this. And I'm going to stain the handle the same color. And I'll do that by using some brown wax. Uh, but I'm going to paint this uh, because this galvanized look is just not in anymore. So I'm going to do two coats of the color buttercream. And, um, and then I'll... Um, do some light distressing on it and add some clear wax uh, to finish it off. And I didn't want to glue these on after I had already painted it because I was afraid it wouldn't hold as well. So I'm just going to have to carefully trim out around these feet uh, when I paint the bottom. But like I said, I give this two coats of the Color Butter Cream, all except for the handle and the feet and those were going to be um actually ended up not having to do the feet in the brown wax because once i put the brown wax on the handle it it matched i think lifting this up with some legs and adding some this white really made a big difference in that piece now because she wanted snowmen and um because this t her tiered tray is going to be in the kitchen, I decided to uh, use this salt and pepper shaker grinder. And um, I'm just going to paint these. I think I've done these before on a video, but I'm just going to paint these uh, two coats of the color buttercream. And uh, when you're doing an item like this, when, when you know your item is used, for the kitchen it's a good idea to really clean these with uh, some alcohol or something that will cut grease because most likely they had some grease build up on them so uh, that's just a tip that when you're dealing with items like this most likely it's going to have that uh, that grease that's going to keep this from sticking well so like i said just give it a good cleaning first so uh, I put two cups of the color buttercream and then did a light distress on it and then finished it off with a clear coat. And I just used a clear wax. And now I need to paint a face on each of these. And this is going to be a little couple. So I'm going to make one face look more like a male and one more like a female. That way they'll look more like a couple. Uh, so I'm using, I'm doing a little bit larger eyes than I generally do because I'm going to go back, uh, with these and add a highlight because I just want to give these a little bit more, uh, personality. So, um, I'm just very lightly putting some brows on here. This is going to be the male and, um, and then instead of doing the little dots that I generally do for the mouth, I'm going to draw a little mouth on. Like I said, these I just want to have a little bit of personality. And I know that one brow is a little higher and a little different than the other. That's just an, another way that you can add some character like he's raising his eyebrow. Um, but you really can't go wrong on these faces. Just decide what kind of look you want them to have. And most likely it'll work. 
And I'm using this burnt orange for my nose. And uh, a lot of people ask me about this color. Uh, my sister mixed this and, and gave me some in a jar. So I have no idea what she mixed it with. But if I'm making a burnt orange, I just use an orange and uh, a deep orange actually. And then, um, and then I add a little bit of brown. So that will give you this burnt orange orange color or something similar anyway. So uh, now with the girl, I'm gonna very, very lightly add just a little bit of eyelashes. Now you have to be really, really careful when you add eyelashes because you definitely don't want to get too heavy handed on your eyelashes. So uh, even if you have to kind of dry brush them on until you learn to do them, uh, but I don't ever add more than a few eyelashes on the edges. I don't try to do them up and down because for me that just doesn't work. Uh, I just never get it to look right. So uh, the two areas that you need to be really careful with is the brows because you don't want to get it too too deep, too dark. Uh, and like I said, the, the eyelashes, eyelashes just very, very, very lightly touch it. As you can see here, uh, I don't touch it on uh, a few strokes because um, I just want to kind of ease into it before I make contact with with the uh, brush. That's just easier than having to uh, repaint the whole face if you mess up. So um, once I get my lashes on that one, then I just add that little nose and um, and then, um, then I'm gonna let the face dry before I do uh, some highlighting because I'm gonna add some little twinkle in the eyes. So, um, and kind of highlight the nose, but I need to let that dry first. So now because I am working with the hard surface here, I don't want to glue my buttons directly onto the hard surface because it won't hold. So I'm just putting little pieces of uh, fabric behind each button and uh, I like it to be a little bit larger than the button and I like it to be square because uh, I want to see that behind the button. And that's just a matter of preference. It's just what I like. I think it just gives them a little more primitive look. So I glue that fabric on and then glue some tiny buttons on. And um, now the buttons will stay good, especially since the buttons have the little holes in it so the um, the glue is going to make good contact with the fabric and then it'll kind of the glue will kind of squish into those buttonholes and it will hold well and now i can put the twinkle in the eyes i just put a little dot of white in the eyes and uh and then just a very light line of uh of white along the top of the nose and that will add a little sparkle to his eyes and her eyes and kind of highlight that nose and just that little bit makes a big difference in the face so I do that with both of these and uh, and then let that dry well and I decided here that I wanted of uh, distress on these because uh, I felt like they even using the better cream they were a little too white so uh, in order to distress this I just took some of my antique oxide ink and just uh, kind of rubbed here and there just to give this more of an aged look and this would have been better done without the buttons uh, but the buttons were already on when I decided this is what I wanted to do so um, it's still not too late to do it and then I just decided to use a little bit of eyeshadow and kind of uh, give her some rosy cheeks 
And now because I'm going to be adding a hat to this uh, snowman, uh, I decided that it would hold better if I put a little piece of cloth under that. So I just, I'm just i just gluing a little round piece of cloth to the top of the head before I glue the hat on. And then this little hat that I'm going to use is one that I bought last year in a package at Walmart. I think it went on the uh, the little miniature trees because it had a clip on it. But I just took the clip off and I'm going to be using that as the hat. But I wanted also to add some of my antiquing ink to this just to uh, give it a little bit more of an age to look. And then I just glue it onto this little uh, round piece of fabric. And now once I tie a scarf around each of them, then these little snowmen will be finished. And I forgot to mention that I had this little Barbie uh, hat or a little Barbie toboggan that I kind of aged it by dipping it in coffee and used that for her hat. Now, um, I decided to use these little bottle br brush trees that I got at the Dollar Tree. So you get three to pack here, one larger one and then two smaller ones. And I thought that was a really good value. So um, I'm taking the largest one and, uh, and I'm, I've drilled a little hole in the top of this little block and now I'm putting a little glue down in that hole and I'll stick this tree in that I've taken the base off of and that'll kind of give the illusion of a tree in a box and then for the rest of my trees uh, I actually did several uh, I'm going to just uh, glue them with the base on them to a little rock and then I'll wrap that with some burlap, and I'm just using burlap ribbon here, and uh, tie some jute string around it, and then cut my excess off, and that will look like a, uh, a cut tree in a bag. So, um, so these are very easy ways to make these little trees look more substantial. And like I said, I'll just tie that off and then I'm just going to cut all that excess away and it'll just look like a live tree looks when you purchase it. So like I said, I did several like these and, and even some of the larger one like these and those will be good on a tear tray. And then next, I'm going to make some little simple snowmen to put in this uh, because I'm not going to put these... Um, this salt and pepper shaker in my tray uh, because they're too large. So I'm just using these little styrofoam balls and gluing them together. And then I'm gonna cover them with some uh, nylon fabric. It's just kind of a fabric that I get at um, Walmart. And um, it's just like the kind of fabric that they make tights from. And I got like a yard and a half of it for two bucks and I thought that was a really good deal. It makes a really good fabric to cover these t so that you don't see this styrofoam. And I've painted this styrofoam at one time, but I just don't like the styrofoam look. So um, I'm just gonna be covering this up. So I'm doing two different types here. I'm gonna do one three tier and one two tier. So for the three tier, I stretch it over the top uh, of the head only, and then I um, tie some string around that because uh, that can be hidden by the scarf. So I'm gonna stretch it around that, and then after I tie that off, then I pull my fabric as tight as I can get it, and then I stretch it around both the uh, middle and the bottom section and uh, and then I'll tie that off and then pull that as tight as I can so again I just pull that really tight 
and then I'm going to stretch it down over the next two sections and and then tie that off and pull that really tight. And there I'm adding just a little extra glue because I want to make sure that that doesn't fall off there when I pull this tight. And this is just a good way that you can make really small um, really small snowmen or you can make them different sizes actually. So again I just tie that around the bottom and then pull my fabric tight. And then after I get that uh, that pulled tight then I, I cut the bottom off as close to the, the uh, knot as I can and um, and then this will be ready to glue onto a base. But first I'm going to use my antique oxide on this and do a little distressing on this also. And then I'm just going to glue this onto a wood disc. This is a disc that uh, I made a little paw print ornament out of at one time. And I sold a few of those and then they just stopped selling. So I'm just using this uh, instead of using a fresh disc and that will give it a good base to sit set on so that it sets up straight and has a little weight also and then i'm using just some little twigs and just sticking them into the sides for the arms and it sticks right through that fabric since that's more like tight fabric and or tights fabric and um and then it sticks down into that styrofoam and now he needs some buttons so just stick some little tiny buttons on there and uh, paint a face on and then he'll be finished and i forgot to mention that after i get his face face painted on then um i add some um joint compound around the the top of the base uh, around the top of that wood slice and it kind of looks like he's in snow and then it camouflages that wood slice I don't worry with putting it on, on the sides of the wood slice but I just cover the top well and I do the same for the two tiered tray uh, or snowmen and uh, then these were finished and like I said, you can make these any size you want. And now I'm going to take these items and decorate the tiered tray. A lot of people are intimidated by tiered trays. And they can be difficult. Uh, but as, you, as long as you don't overthink them, uh, then they're kind of fun to decorate. Uh, just don't worry about messing up because all you have to do is pull the items back out and start over. So I like to just kind of take my time and play with it. So I'm just going to show, take you through the process here and play a little music while I decorate this tray.
I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.